Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And good morning to those of you at home who are watching this service of remembrance via social media. Some verses of scripture from Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. Those who wait for the Lord to renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. We stand and sing our first <coughs> hymn, hymn number 459, for all the saints who flung their labours rest. <laughs>
Brothers and sisters, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving to draw near to the throne of God in penitence and humility, to hear his proclamation of justice and righteousness, to remember those who participated in world wars and other conflicts since, in particular those from our own city, to acknowledge the relief and joy of the ending of times of great hostility and the anguish, <coughs> sorrow and grief of those who never shared in their relief and joy. To remember a world and lives changed forever through conflict. To pray for all those who continue to serve in our armed forces and to pray that in the power of the Spirit we may serve him in the pursuit of his heavenly realm. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call us into a common fellowship of solidarity and love. Draw near to us as we remember those who died in conflict. As you reflect on the sacrifice and the horrors of war, may you move us to always work for peace and justice in our broken world. And this we ask through the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our future to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. So let us pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to remain what we are, and the right what shall be, that we may have mercy and walk humbly with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain seated as Lindsay reads from the Bible. First reading is taken from Isaiah 43, verses 1 This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, said concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above, above the hills, and all the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will leave their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second is taken from Matthew chapter 5, beginning to read. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, may I speak this morning, and may our hearts be open to hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I want to start this morning with something that's very obvious, and that is that as, as people, uh, there is a great diversity across the globe, isn't there? Humanity is, is very, very different. There's diversity. And, um, and whilst we try, uh, particularly when we are younger as teenagers, to conform, we usually miss the mark because uh, we are all so very, very different. We, we look different, we think differently, we talk differently, we have different values. But one of the, one of the um, aspects of our society in 2023 is that we are taught to celebrate and embrace this difference. And if you go into any of our schools, you will encounter that day and daily. Uh, and, and throughout society, we are taught to celebrate and embrace uh, the difference. And you know, I would argue that the values that underpin that teaching are essentially Christian. Because from the very beginning of time, we are taught uh, that men and women are made in the image of God and they should be respected. The Apostle Paul also said, in Christ there is no Greek, nor Jew, nor male, nor female, nor no slave, nor free. Uh, as people, we're made in the image of God, in his likeness, and uh, he calls on us to respect that likeness in each other. And you know, just as we are encouraged to um, celebrate difference and diversity. Uh, we also understand, and I think everyone here could, could echo this, uh, from the bitter experience of life, that difference is a driver of conflict, difference is a driver of disagreement. And, uh, and that can be um, uh, a difference about, uh, we disagree about little things, we argue about big things, and we do that in family levels, community level uh, on um, in a province like our own in Northern Ireland and we do that internationally as well where states uh, end up uh, going to to war and that, that I think that is is uh, I think that really is a statement of fact um, and I suppose in our own society I think we are um, and I think this is wonderful to be able to say that the younger members of our community here in Northern Ireland have not experienced what we, the older generations, have experienced, uh, and particularly in the latter part of the last century. We in Northern Ireland are learning to navigate um, difference. Some might say we're slow learners, um, I might, uh, and maybe that's, uh, the younger ones might say we're, that us older ones are slow learners, but because we're the ones that tend to be exercising power at the minute. Um, I tend not uh, to agree with that, given the level of pain uh, that the years of conflict have generated in our society. Um, I know of uh, someone who was, family was bereaved in the conflict from 18 to 21, in uh, down south uh, in the Civil War and they still live with that a hundred years on. Pain lasts uh, and uh, it is very, very difficult uh, to get past. Um, but we have, I think, in Northern Ireland come to a place where difference is to be addressed through, through politics. And I think that's a great place to be and uh, that we, we talk and we look for uh, agreement rather than turning to, to the alternative. But however, uh, in various parts of the world, the differences have pushed people into uh, to beyond the limit, leading to violent clashes, bloodshed, again uh, at communal level, and then right through to, to, to war between nations. 
So I think that is stating the obvious. I also want to state the obvious on Remembrance Sunday uh, about Remembrance Sunday and, and what we, we are essentially doing here today. Because each year, uh, as a day, we, we set it aside to commemorate the contribution and this is, was either consciously or unknowingly of those members of the armed services who lost their lives in the two world wars and in, in conflicts since then. And given the focus of today, that is the two world wars, I, I decided to, to have a little look uh, at what the internet might tell me about the actual vol volume of casualties. And, uh, and I would prefix these numbers by saying that from website to website uh, you get different figures, but the one thing they have in common is just the sheer volume of them. And the other thing is that civilians outnumber the uh, actual servicemen that died, uh, because essentially in 18 and uh, 39, it essentially was servicemen, but also servicewomen. The total number of military and civilian casualties in World War I was around 40 million. And uh, of that, 20 million deaths and 21 mi million wounded. And uh, of that, 9.7 million military and 10 million civilians. Huge numbers, hard to comprehend. And as I said, they vary from website to website that I looked at. World War II, and even more, uh, this, um, a, a, a larger difference between the military and the civilian. Uh, it, it's the deadliest military conflict in history, and 60 million people died, and the figures I saw were 15 million military and 45 million civilians. These, these figures are incomprehensible to us. Um, whether they're 100% accurate or not, we know that they, 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 there was vast numbers of people uh, were killed. And, uh, and today we've come together um, to remember those who fell in the service of our nation, the, the men and the women who fell and the men and the women who served and were maimed. And we, we've come also uh, to, because to, uh, we do have that need to, to look uh, to, uh, to the past so that we can hopefully chart a future and a different future, one in which uh, we are committed to peace. So whatever we think, uh, if we are to reimagine the future of uh, our province, our nation, our world, um, then we must take the path which requires of us being able to live creatively with the differences that I mentioned at the start of this uh, address and we are we have to find the path where we can argue well one with another and uh, without ending up in conflict that's what I mean by argue well and conflict that leads uh, to, to death and casualties. At Remembrance we recall those times in the past when quarrels have gone beyond words when differences uh, have led to, to major wars and, um, and that's why we have assembled this morning and the very words that uh, John read as, as we started this service, they set the scene. Uh, those, we remember those who participated in world wars and conflicts since and particularly those from our own city to acknowledge the relief and the joy at the ending of times of great hostility, the anguish, the sorrow and the grief of those who never shared in that relief and joy, and to remember a world and life change forever through conflict. And, that, and that, that's what we gathered for today, but another aspect of this of course is uh, we not only do we remember, we confront the reality of the evils of war uh, and, and how that remains in our world. And uh, we all know that the, count, the, the casualties are mounting up. They have been mounting up in Ukraine now for nearly two years, I think it is, in Gaza and Israel for a much shorter period of time in recent history, in places like Iraq, in places like Syria, in places like Somalia, in places like Sudan. Uh, Right across the globe, casualties continue uh, to, to mount up. And in these conflicts, the difference cannot seem to be reconciled. 
listening and learning is, is drowned out by the sounds of gunfire and the artillery and the missiles and the, qu the quarrels overflow into destruction, bloodshed and, and death. Do you know, um, and I think in these and in so many other conflicts, uh, what we as, as people do is to face God's image in each one of us. We ignore our common humanity, that gift that is from God to, to each one of us. And you know, uh, as, I, as I think and reflect on the scriptures, I'm minded that uh, uh, it's not always wrong to engage in quarrels and in arguments. Um, Jesus did himself. He wasn't always meek and mild. He did overthrow uh, the, the tables in the temple. He metaphorically and physically challenged uh, those in authority in Palestine uh, as he walked this earth. Uh, Jesus argued uh, with those people and for those for though Jesus knew we are all different he knew too that fundamentally beneath all the human posturing and puffing we all seek the same things as we are all made in the image of God and on the heart of every human uh, are, are, are the things that God would have uh, love friendship welcome acceptance mercy hope, forgiveness, and most importantly, uh, peace. If we are to reflect God fully in our lives, those are the things that, that we search out. As his followers today, these are the words that unite us rather than divide us, and, each, and, and we're challenged uh, to take them off the page as I have just read them, and we are challenged to live them out in our lives, so that in some small way, we prepare uh, for the kingdom uh, of which Jesus so often spoke. That means, I think, being determined uh, to attain and maintain peace. And, uh, and that's difficult for individuals to do, but we can all make uh, choices in our own lives. Uh, we must try, uh, keep trying to disagree well. We must try to to hold what differences we have creatively. We must recognize that we are all different and, and uh, be able to thank God for that difference and that diversity. So on this Remembrance Sunday, we come together as one and we come to renew our commitment to seek that for all that makes for peace. But faced with the evil of the world, I, I do believe that sometimes that we feel totally powerless and um, I think the, the situation in, in Israel and Gaza is, is a case in point. Um, even when we cannot as individuals do much about the war-torn regions of the world, we can in our lives, in our arguments and in our disagreements, strive to find and model a different way of, of living. And that's the way of Jesus. And that's the way of peace and reconciliation. And we have within our own province a wonderful opportunity to do that because we've got to the place where we're talking we're not we're not shooting uh, it's not easy to follow the way of jesus but the bible tells us that god gives the words and the wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict listen to this verse from luke 21 and verse 15 for i will give you the words and the wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. It's not a wonderful verse. And when you open the scriptures, as I said two weeks ago, uh, when the, the, the orange were here uh, on Reformation Sunday, and, and, and what way would you rather live? Would you rather live at war or would you rather live at peace? Um, if we are to attain the very heart of the good news of Jesus Christ and believe there is a kingdom uh, vision that takes us through and beyond uh, terror, a vision that meets uh, terror with trust, faith and endurance. Um, we can only rise to this if we rest and trust in the promise that even those who meet uh, with death are alive um, to, the, to, to the God 
of the living. We must remember that according to scripture, at the sound of the trumpet in the final resurrection, those alive and those already part of that great beyond will rise to meet the Lord, each carrying evidence of how life was lived uh, on this earth. And today, as, as I draw these uh, words to a close, it is my prayer for, for my own life, and, uh, and I hope it is your prayer too, that uh, God, uh, may our God and Father direct our ways, make us increase in love for one another and for all humanity. And may Christ so strengthen our hearts in holiness that we may be blameless before God the Father and at the coming of the Lord Jesus. Whilst we may disagree, let us continually strive to play our little part in building a world in which all have a valued place, where none is, is left behind and where all can live in peace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today and the opportunity to step aside from the world and to remember uh, the, the, uh, the wars uh, of the past, uh, to remember those who served from our own nation and served uh, for peace and justice. And as we remember them, help us, Lord, to commit our lives once again to the cause of peace. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And this morning, uh, as we come to our act of remembrance, we're going to sing the hymn number 502. Hymn number 502. <laughs>
Those from this part shall you carry me treasure, and all who have died and lived in the service of others. We remember William John Gray, second lieutenant, Rock Royal Irish Rifles, Albert A. Portland, eleventh Royal Irish Rifles, Thomas Portland, eleventh Royal Irish Rifles, Edward Lavery, second Royal Instrument Fusiliers, William Moffat, thirteen Royal Scots Fusiliers. Thomas Stitt, 2nd Royal Penisculum Fusiliers, Robert Collin, 11th Royal Irish Rifles, George Collin, 14th Royal Irish Rifles, James Collin, 9th Royal Irish Rifles, and Paul Walker, 11th 2nd Royal Penisculum Fusiliers. Henry Albert George Hill, the Australian Imperial Force, Alexander Martin, the Auckland Regiment, the New Zealand Force. Robert Holcroft, Sergeant, Quartermaster Sergeant, 7th Royal Lancashire Regiment. And in the Second War, John, William, Murphy, Royal Air Force, Ivan Phillips, Royal Minister, Fusiliers, William Roberts, Royal Artillery, John Finley Smiley, Royal Marines, Joseph Beckett Thompson, Royal Air Force. We remember all who have died as a result of war and conflict. <coughs> shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not bear them, nor the years condemn. After going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them.
are passed away. For my sin, the Son of God, from who, whose love in Christ we cannot be part of, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgiving to those whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
account of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the armed forces community, for the pressures they face while on active service, and when their service is over, for those who live with physical and psychological wounds, and those who support them each day, that they may be greater understanding of their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the work of ad advocacy, for every effort to give voice to service and ex-service personnel and their family, for those who speak up, for His Majesty's Armed Forces in Parliament and in the corridors of power, that their service may be acknowledged and their voice heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray that we may all fulfil our duty to remember, to remember those who have died in active service and those who have sacrificed health of mind and body in protecting this nation, that our remembrance may do them honour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the ongoing work of the Royal British Legion and all other service uh, charities, for the people who contribute in caring, campaigning and remembrance, and for the next generation of service personnel, that they may have the hope of support and a better future, whatever might be asked of them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And on this Remembrance Sunday, we also remember from our parish family those who have asked for our prayers. We particularly remember Eric as he prepares for surgery in the week ahead. And we also remember Peggy, uh, currently in Meadowlands Musgrave Park Hospital. And we pray uh, for her ongoing convalescence. Pray, Father, be with both those individuals, and now in the quietness of our own hearts, uh, we name before God those whom we know who are suffering today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on the day like today, as we remember those who have died in conflict, it inevitably, as each day does, uh, draws us close to those whom we love but we see no longer, those of our family that have died. And so, in a, mo a moment of quietness, we remember before God those near and dear to us and now with the Lord. Father, we thank you for those whom we've named in the quietness of our hearts. We thank you for the love they share with us, and we thank you for the hope of a joyful reunion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we uh, come to the closing part of our service, uh, our next hymn is hymn number 361, and this is our offering hymn. Now thank we all our God. <laughs>